how can a couple start to develop? Because, you know, after a couple has been together, let's say you got two, two extremes. You got a couple that's pretty brand new and then you have a couple that's been together and this is their pattern of, of how they relate to each other. So now they're relating to each other on a combative scale. How do we start to dial that back in order to reestablish the togetherness so that we can move forward into a phenomenal relationship? My personal opinion on that is you have to take selfishness out of that equation altogether. And whatever it takes to take the selfishness out, meaning whether you need to go to therapy to find out why is it that you're selfish? Is it something that, you know, you've seen growing up in your childhood? Is it something that you were exposed to? It was it a bad experience, like in a relationship that hurts you now that you're closed off. So now you're selfish and it's all about you, you know, so you have to divulge what that selfishness comes from. And if you're able to do that, then you're able to take that out to out of the equation, then you're able to start creating togetherness because it's no longer about you and it's about us. Right. Okay. So it's just really reconfiguring your mind to think us as opposed to you and me. Correct. Right. And I, and I, that's one of the things I work with um, also on a lot of couples. The language that they've created is a very separated language. Right. They speak of your child, uh, your responsibility what you do what versus what i do and it becomes a versus each other and so that becomes the pattern that that the relationship starts that's that's the trajectory that the relationship starts to go towards so you're saying just it's time to first of all take into consideration the things that you're saying and how you view your partner um yeah you view your partner as a team as a teammate correct and and the thing is also um a lot of people say relationships are 50 50, right? Mm-hmm. I don't agree with that. I, I don't either. Relationships are 100 100. You put in 100% and she puts in 100% and you got 200% right there. Just right. like you said, a lot of people talk with, oh, your kid, so that's your 50%. Or, mm-hmm. you know, you do this, that's your 50%. No, it's our kid, it's our responsibility. It's 100% me, 100% you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I 1000% I've been, um, that's been, I think as you begin to study this stuff, you begin to see some of the similarities between a lot of couples and why, you know, the, and that's one of the common themes that I've seen also is that people think that they should bring half and half. No, it, when you're in a team, you do the best that you, that you can do in your particular area. And I think a lot of people haven't established their particular area and how it contributes to the whole bigger picture. Right. So people are trying to do and overextend themselves by saying, well, since you're not going to do it, I'll do it right. um, because they haven't established, okay, like this is where I'm strongest in. This right. is where you're strongest in. So of course you're going to have a lot more leeway and that's where the 100% comes in right. as opposed to my area. And this is what creates uniqueness in the last episode we talked about maintaining your uniqueness um, in, in a relationship but without understanding what you have to offer it's going to be hard to know what you don't have to offer correct correct and, and it's all about knowing yourself too exactly exactly okay. and by knowing what you don't have to offer you allow that person to do the to be the best person they are within the relationship also 